Welcome back to another one of our series of videos on situational awareness. Once more, my name is John Krajewski, and today I'd like to talk to you a bit more about how you can leverage historical data to improve your situational awareness and your process visualization. In previous videos, we had talked about some trend usage, and we'll talk a little bit more about trend usage in this video, but we're really going to go a bit more into depth of leveraging history outside of just using it in trends. And what I'll do here is try to emphasize where uh, some of these have been improved with our recent releases. So within the InTouch 2014 R2 and the Wonderware System Platform 2014 R2 releases, there have been some significant improvements which have uh, greatly simplified what it, what it would take to be able to achieve some of these results. So I'm going to start here with this dashboard that I'm presenting to you now, which has uh, been an updated version of the water demo that I've, I've shown in previous versions of this video. And for each of these uh, filtration units, I have got four filtration units numbered 100, 200, 300, and 400. And each of those units, well, I've got three key, key performance indicators that I'm monitoring. I'm monitoring the effluent turbidity, the flow, and the level. But if we center in on the effluent turbidity here for a moment here, um, it's showing me a lot of information about the effluent turbidity. It's showing me its current value numerically. It's showing me a trend uh, of that value, and that trend is currently over the last 60 minutes or, or one hour. Um, I'm able to see the current value again in a visual representation here. And so this, uh, the radius of this like pie segment, if you will, here that's showing me that. I'm seeing a, a highlight here which is showing me the optimal range. So I can see that I'm currently outside of my optimal range, and I might want to take a deeper look at that. And I can also see a darker line on the outside which says where I've been over the current time of focus. So my current time of focus is the time period I'm setting down here in the, uh, in the bar area. And uh, I can see that in this particular unit, it's been, it's been higher than it is now in the last hour. Um, if I look at some of the other units, they're similarly behaving, except for 300. In the unit 300, I can say that something must have gone pretty bad because not only was it outside of the expected limits, here's an alarm flag, which is showing me the high alarm. So this went well outside its high alarm in the last hour. It's fine now in terms of the way it's operating. It's still out. It's still within the operational limits I'm expecting for now. But you can see in the last hour, and based on this trend, you can see about where it occurred. Probably just a little over half an hour ago, um, I, had, I had reached that spike that had, that had sent me up into that high area. I probably would want to go take a look at that. And so the current representation of the value isn't really uh, telling me much in terms of the performance of this unit because it was recently pretty bad, even though right now it's not a problem. So I'd want to investigate that. So there's one example of how you can leverage historical data. In this particular case, all the data that's being retrieved for this symbol is coming off of this trend pen. So this trend pen tells me things like uh, the high and the low uh, within that range. Um, and I'm getting the operational limits here from the object uh, on the back end. I'm getting the current value from the object. And the trend itself is coming from historical data on that object. All information that could have been done with a 2014 release, there really was no new capabilities to take advantage of this. If I look below these, uh, these, uh, these gauge type symbols here and look at, the, uh, at these symbols labeled as effluent turbidity hourly average, what this allows me to do is to look at over um, the, the last eight hours. So this is the current hour labeled as zero, and then hour minus one, minus two, minus three, back going kind of eight hours into the past. I can see what the hourly average is for this unit. I can see that its total span was from 0.21 to 0.59, and 0.59 is well outside of my expected um, range there. I can see that 0.59 occurred um, last hour. So my last hour was pretty bad, even though in this hour, uh, I'm much better in, in this hour. But I can see this information on an hourly basis. Uh, to build out this particular symbol, uh, this is utilizing the new capability with custom properties. So if you're not familiar with custom properties, those are variables that you can build in your process visualization. Uh, and these variables can now be directly linked to statistical properties in your historical data. So that you just go ahead and link them up directly here. And I'm telling it basically I want the average over an hour. And I'm telling it the beginning hour and uh, the hour range and the, and the start times here for each of these particular units. You'll notice that every once again it flashes because I've got this particular uh, graphic updating once a minute. And so it does flash when it, upgrade, uh, when it updates. And that's, um, this, that's why you're seeing that. 
So I'm going to move beyond that in terms of uh, th those capabilities and, and look at some of the new trend capabilities that we've, we're including. So in this demo, and I'll make this demo available for you, if you double click on the alarms page, I've now got some historical data utilization information. I'm going to get some of the noise out of here and get into a, a smaller time window. Uh, we introduced in 2014 a new trend pen graphic element, and that trend pen graphic element just really was just the pen element that allows you to go ahead and build your own um, uh, visualization capabilities like spark lines and other tools. Uh, we have also introduced in 2014 uh, a notion of a symbol wizard, that's what capability for you to be able to enable or disable capabilities within a graphic, um, very simply within a uh, user definable wizard element. We've taken those capabilities and combined them uh, together to build some new trend wizards. So you'll see some of them up at the top here. Uh, you'll see the first one on the left uh, on the top here. So this trends with meters, the fixed range with meter, is showing that there is a meter on the right-hand side of this. Um, it's using the trend pen that's combined in with some of these lines to be able to provide you contextual information. You'll also see that as a hover over, over top of this, I'm getting some uh, tooltip information about set points, process variables, the maximum over the period, the minimum over the period, and the average. Um, I can also see here the current value. I can see alarm limits. I can see op uh, operating ranges, set points. This allows you um, to, very, to get a very good context of how that, uh, that particular variable is performing uh, within the system. Again, this particular trend is not targeted at data analysis but really at supporting contextual information for real-time process control. This one on the right, which is labeled as auto-scaled, is actually the same wizard, but just with different wizard options enabled. You'll see that the, 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 the meter has been turned off on the right here. Many of the, the lines the, have been turned off, and we set it to auto-scale. The key difference between the one on the left and the right is it's the same source data, but the one on the left has been scaled to extents of the range uh, of that signal, whereas this one has been scaled to the extents of the data, not the range, but the data itself. And so this is filling it. This gives you, if you wanted to have a very, very clear visibility of nuances in that data where it's fluctuated, uh, auto scaling really helps in that case here. Again, starting from the same trend wizard that are, which are available in the library as well. Below that, you'll see that, again, the same elements which have now been rotated. This has been a pretty common request we've heard where uh, people may, may be used to utilizing strip chart recorders, which were orienting that trend pen uh, vertically versus horizontally. And so here we're showing you that you can rotate these elements as they're, they're not embedded controls, so just any graphic element and any graphic element can be rotated. Here they've been rotated 90 degrees. You'll see another trend element over here, which is the multiple pen trend. Uh, this really, again, is not, t not intended for data analysis, but sometimes you'll want to be able to host multiple pens. And in this particular case, I think there are four pens on this particular graphic that are being hosted. Uh, again, in the intention here is to support uh, process control with real-time data analysis with contextualization um, and not necessarily for process analysis. We've got other tools which are good for that. If I go below here to the startup curve, this is leveraging a capability that we improved the trend pen graphic element itself. Now you can actually tell it where you want to anchor that time. Most of the trends, as you can see up here in the top, uh, are anchored whereas the right-hand side is now, whereas the bottom, you can actually set a fixed time to anchor the left. And so if I, if I click this Initiate Startup, what it's simulating here is the startup of a piece of process equipment. What I've done is I've linked this trend to a data variable, and I've told it to set that time time at my startup time so I can see how that data is going to be process, uh, pro proceeding throughout my startup process. And here I'm only showing a minute's worth of data to, um, to facilitate a, a short video, but sometimes these processes could take hours or even days for someone to start them up. And so it would be very important for you to know if this thing is deviating from your expectations. I put this symbol in here um, to be able to make it easier for you to create these kinds of startup curves. So if I hit this little wrench, I can adjust how that startup curve presents itself. So if I wanted for some reason to have it look like that, I could change it. The key thought being here is that predicting these values could be somewhat tricky work. I and mean, if you just wanted to you know, run the process once, know that the process is healthy, set up your limits on where you think that thing should be, and then turn it off, this, this particular graphic element can make that possible. So this, again, is leveraging a new feature in 2014 R2. I'm going to come over here to the historical data playback section and, and talk to you about 
what we did here. Um, so we've leveraged the custom property capabilities that were added in 2014 R2 to be able to link to the statistical information on, on, on historical data. So in this particular case, I'm just linking for the most part to the first data in a set. So I've got these time controls here at the bottom which allow me to either scrub through time or to play through time into a, in, a, in a certain time window. And so I can use this to adjust the time that I'm looking at, but really I'm just, uh, I'm also taking, I'm just taking that time and I'm using it to tell the information of what historical statistic I want. In this case, I want the first value and I'm using it to animate numerical values as well as some process graphics. I'm also leveraging that improvement we made to the trend pens to tell it when I want the trend pen to run from. And so in this particular case, I'm taking this time and I'm still using the, the overall governing um, setting for this application as to what the duration of that is. So I just changed it to 15 minutes and you can see that this thing is playing through. Uh, I, I've currently got it set to play. I can pause this. I can back it up. Uh, I can play it again. I can actually pause again. I can change it from a 30 minutes to 8 hours. So here I'm at 8 hours. I'm going to play it back. Um, set it back to play. I can play it at 100 times speed, which really is just skipping every 100 seconds, or 10 times speed, which skips forward every 10 seconds. These was This was really just an exercise in, in creating some graphics that managed that time setting. All, all these graphics are just consuming that one time setting to then give me the historical information from that point in time. So either that set of data for the trend or that point data to be able to process a leverage on that process graphic. You could use this information to be able to analyze a situation that had occurred in your system to try and understand what the operator was seeing at that point in time and how you might want to adjust that process to make it simpler. This, these examples are, are, are showing you how we can make better use of historical data to improve the situational awareness in your system. And some of these were emphasizing some points that we had made with their 2014 R2 improvements that we delivered recently. I will go ahead and make this, uh, I'll put a link into the description down below all, all for the de this demo if you would like to download that. Um, please offer any comments and feedback you have down in the comments section and please subscribe for future videos in this series. Thank you very much.